weeks ahead of the move that took the media company owned by Donald Trump public. Checking Wall Street. Right now, the Dow is up 140 points. The Nasdaq is lower. This is CBS News. Find great hires fast with Indeed. Their end-to-end hiring solution makes it easy to attract, interview, and hire candidates all in the same place. Visit Indeed.com slash credit. News is brought to you by Jingris Thompson and Walks, a statewide team of personal injury lawyers getting you the justice you deserve. Call 855-954-1186 for a free consultation. For Civic Media News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. Here's what you need to know in Southeast Wisconsin. The expiration of the air quality advisory is at noon. It's been kind of a slow uh, process here to see much in in the way of improvement, but um, we're hopeful that a shift in the winds um, at these critical levels will help to shunt the direct feed of smoke into the area. Meteorologist Paul Collar with the National Weather Service says possible rain could help shift to the air. Waukesha, Racine, and pockets of southeast Wisconsin again registered unhealthy to very unhealthy air yesterday. In October, the city of Waukesha will demolish the empty Horizon West condo building after reaching an agreement with the Homeowners Association. Waukesha will bear the demolition costs and place a lien on the property with potential reimbursement from the condo's insurer. For Civic Media News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. When it comes to achieving successful jury verdicts and settlements, one law firm stands out above the rest. Jingris Thompson and Walks, a $6.2 million settlement for a woman permanently paralyzed as a result of medical malpractice. $4.9 million to members of a family injured due to the negligence of a truck driver and his employer. Call Jingris Thompson and Walks today, 855-954-1186. All in children, Jingris Thompson and Walks, GTW Lawyers Guide. Hey, this is Matt from Design Garden. Remember when the internet was new? Back then you had to leave your house to start a business. Companies used to pay programmers bags of cash to get online. Now, small businesses can get online with a Facebook business page or Squarespace or Google My Business or WordPress. But which tools should you use? Can you afford to go down the wrong path? Design Garden uses modern tools to build your website the right way. Find us online at design.garden. Again, that's design.garden. If you're searching for Tom Nacho electrical service for your commercial or industrial property, connect with Current Electric in Wauwatosa. Current Electric offers a wide array of electrical services to clients in Milwaukee and the surrounding areas. Celebrating 40 years of energizing and illuminating lives in southeastern Wisconsin, their dedicated team of superheroes can help with everything from parking lot lighting upgrades to office and business LED conversions, EV chargers to service upgrades. Call 262-295-295. 2815 or log on to callcurrent.com. Hey, son, how are you feeling? Um, uh, I'm fine, Pops. What's on your mind? I. <laughs> How many plays have you done over the years? Oh, many. Many, many, many. Would you do another one? Should we do a play? And put it up somewhere and do it as like a fundraiser someday? That'd be great. Moving Wisconsin forward one joke at a time, this is Kristen Bry with As Goes Wisconsin. Yada, yada, yada. Hello, Wisconsin! Hello, Wisconsin. Welcome to the 11 o'clock hour of As Goes Wisconsin. I am your host, Kristen Bry. J. Matt Nair is on the board, and it is Thursday at 11, which means it is time for public cervix announcement, where we welcome Dr. Kristen Lyerly to join us to talk about women's health, headlines, things that are going on in the news that regards uh, to your health. And we also take your calls or any questions that you might have, 844 967 Two seven eight nine. That's eight four four nine six. Party, Doctor Lyerly, how are you doing today? I'm all right, despite this crazy air that we're having to breathe right now. I know. How are you doing? So where where are you right now? I am in Green Bay, but You're the whole Green- eastern part of Wisconsin is in terrible shape. This is the worst air quality we've had in this state ever since we started measuring yeah. air quality. It's, um, have you felt any different or have you just been mostly been staying? I've been trying to just stay inside. 
Yeah, my air conditioning is broken. <laughs> oh, <God>. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. This is my fault because I was limping along and I knew it wasn't in good shape and I should have just fixed it, but I didn't. And so now it's hot and I'm in a tank top <laughs> trying to get by with the curtains drawn and trying to avoid going outside and opening the windows. So, I mean, this is these are bad times. And, you know, to your point, you may not be feeling bad because of the air. Vulnerable people probably are. They may feel yeah. burning in their throats or in their lungs or in their nose, but this air is not good for any of us. So if you venture outside, it really is wise to don one of those K95, KN95 masks and just protect yourself from all of those little tiny particles that can get wedged in your lungs. And Dr. Lyerly, are those easy to get a hold of now, those, those KN95 masks? Do you know? Yes, they are. And many of us have them still sitting around. So just, you know, grab one, stick it in your car. You can use it over and over again. But just please be safe out there. All right. Well, I was very interested when I saw this headline. And I think I'm interested because of the V word, which I now, as I say it, could <laughs> be in, in, in this Not segment vulva. could mean a lot of different things, <laughs> what we mean when we say the V word. But uh, in this instance, I... I'm talking about vaccines, you know, because some people are very anti that. But I would be interested to know if there was indeed a vaccine to prevent cancer, how many of those anti-vaccine people would still be anti-vaccine? Because the next big advance in cancer treatment, this is the headline, could be a vaccine. And I was reading this and thought it was fascinating but you made the point as we were talking about discussing this is that we actually already have at least one vaccine to prevent cancer, which yes, is we do, which is the HPV vaccine. We've had yeah, it for which over I a have now. Me too. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I think at this us. point, most people probably under 40 have that. No, 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 because it was politicized. Do you remember when they rolled it out and people were pushing back? And saying that it was going to make young girls promiscuous. Have sex. They're going to have sex. Mm -hmm. So only about a third of eligible people have received the HPV vaccine, which is crazy because this is a vaccine that, as you said, prevents not only cervical cancer, but also head and neck cancers. The more we know about this vaccine, HPV is everywhere. HPV is the number one reason other than smoking and drinking for throat, head and neck cancers. What? So, I've yeah. never, your neck can get cancer? What? Oh yeah, you can get cancer anywhere. Like cancer in like the, the, the organs, like your esophagus and stuff, or like your neck muscles? In your neck, like in your soft tissue, in your throat, you can get vocal cord cancer. Oh, and yeah. that can come from HPV? You bet. It's actually I had a, no idea. It's a fairly common cancer in gynecologists because back in the day before we wore masks to protect ourselves, we would laser HPV lesions off of people's bottoms and breathe in those fumes. And sometimes we as doctors would get HPV infections in our throats. And some of my colleagues have died, are suffering from HPV related disease because of that. My mind is blown right now. I had no idea. I've, I, I mean, because I remember I was 18 or 19 when it, I think when it was first coming out and I got it. And also that was around the time when you started like HPV, I think, transitioned from being uh, the stigma of other STIs and, until and, and turned more into like literally everyone has it because it's so contagious. Mm -hmm. um, and for men, it's hard to even track whether or not they have it. Uh, and so I just could always assume one that it was a default that a lot of people, young people, especially now, just got the HPV vaccine. So that's news to me. And that HPV can lead to neck and head cancer. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So there's a great reason for boys and men to get this vaccine as well. Initially, it was just recommended for girls. And then they expand, and by girls, I mean like age 12 to 14. Mm -hmm. And then they expanded it to boys. And the idea was herd immunity, but really it does prevent cancer in men as well. So folks, if you're listening, talk to your doctor about the HPV vaccine. It truly could save your life down the road. So then extending, extending that to 
other kinds of cancer that they're researching that could be prevented with a vaccine. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? So we should also talk about hepatitis B because that vaccine has been around for even longer than the HPV vaccine. Hep B is a liver disease that can then turn into cancer. So that vaccine wasn't specifically developed to prevent cancer per se. It was developed to prevent hepatitis B, but mm -hmm. it does prevent cancer down the road. So there's another cancer preventing vaccine that's been around for a long time. But these vaccines that we're talking about are very different. Okay. These are vaccines that are immunotherapy, using your own immune system to fight early cancers in your body. So basically, like the vaccine would be training your like T cells, your like white T cells to go hunt out like cancer cells. Listen to you talking about T cells. <laughs> I, took, I took biology. I, there's some of that back in the back of the cobwebs of my mind. <laughs> That's exactly what these vaccines do. And they're very, very personalized. So oh. Yes. And so they'll, they'll be expensive and they're still in the early stages. So we don't have these vaccines yet, but as we're learning more, especially for people who suffer from genetic related cancer problems, like the BRCA gene and Lynch syndrome, these people, depending on the variation that they have could be up to 80% likely to develop cancer in the future. So we screen them very carefully and they are really eager to see what happens with these vaccines. If we can find early evidence of cancer in these people, it has to be early evidence. This, these vaccines are not going to treat late stage cancers yeah. because at that point your immune system is really pretty compromised. So you have to have a healthy immune system. But if we are screening people and we're finding early evidence of cancer, that's where these vaccines, these personalized vaccines can be really effective. And it, it, they, the evidence and the hope for this kind of treatment is really exciting. Yeah. Our guest is Dr. Kristen Lyerly. It is our public cervix announcement. Dr. Lyerly, I just want to reassure people that back to the HPV vaccine in the 20 years or however long it's been around, no one has become magnetized after taking that vaccine. Not to my knowledge. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there is a vaccine adverse related database out there where people, if they receive a vaccine and they think that they have had an adverse reaction related to that, they can report it. That doesn't necessarily mean that your adverse reaction was related to the vaccine, but it's always good. It helps us gather information because if we see patterns, then we can look more closely into them. So when we work together as a community of people trying to make sure that we have better healthcare for all of us, it, that's exactly what we do. And it's so, so when you say B, what is BRCA? It's the gene that's related to breast cancer. That's what I was going to well ask. Because as ovarian cancer. Because that's what I feel like I, and maybe it's because I'm a woman, but um, the, you know, women who, pre like the preventative measures as far as they get mastectomies before they even have any cancer, just because of the, how likely it is in their, like whatever gene they have or just like family history. And mm -hmm. so is this like, that's what was going to be my question as far as this could be something that you could do this instead of getting rid of your boobs, potentially? You, you, well, not quite. So okay. we still, we screen women. If we know that you have the BRCA gene, if you've got this strong pattern in your family history, then we screen very closely. So we do lots of imaging and there are lots of, you know, lots of um, visits with your provider, breast, self breast exams, all of those things to make sure that if you do develop a cancer, we can catch it early. If we catch it early, that's where these vaccines can become helpful. Okay. So it wouldn't, at least in, and in, in, again, these are, don't exist yet, but it's not something that you would take before there's any sign whatsoever of cancer. Not at this point, although there okay. are a number of different clinical trials out there that are looking at it from different perspectives. So there may be a clinical trial out there. It's definitely worth, if you are someone with these genes, it's definitely worth having this conversation with your doctor, with your oncologist to see maybe you qualify for a trial. And if that's the case, you could be part of the future of medicine. There you go. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we have about a minute left. So I'm going to ask one pregnancy question before when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about Lyme's disease. Um, or is it Lyme or Lyme's? Lime. 
Lyme. Named singular. After Lyme. Singular. Lyme, no S. I don't know where I got the S from. Lyme disease. Uh, can I, as a pregnant person, can you um, use a massage gun? Where are has you using ever, it? Has, <laughs> on my back, because my back is starting to hurt a lot. <laughs> like on my upper back. Is that yeah. okay? Because so, so I got I got mixed messages. I got one for my birthday from my in-laws. And I'm very excited to use it. But then I had another friend who had a kid last year. She's like, I think I was told I'm not supposed to use that. So do you have any kind of definitive answer for me? And your shoulders? I think you should use it. But I think you should also get like shoulder rubs from your partner. Don't you think? I think so, too. Mike, are you listening? <laughs> All right. Well, this is Public Service Announcement with Dr. Kristen Lyerly, our segment every Thursday where we talk about health, women's health. We take your questions. If you have any questions, feel free to text them in 844-967-2789. That's 844 844- Nine six party. When we comes back, come back. We're gonna talk about Lyme disease and what you should know once we all go back outside about those little ticks that can get into your self and your pets and all of it. This is As Goes Wisconsin. The law firm of Jingris Thompson & Walks has a track record of making life-changing positive differences for their clients. $5.25 million to a woman who suffered brain injuries and her husband passed away when struck by a drunk driver. $1 million to three different individuals injured by drunk drivers. $1 million settlement to a man injured in a motorcycle accident. Call Jingris Thompson & Walks, 855-954-1186. All in Jingris, Jingris Thompson & Walks, Weather brought to you by Fresh Fin, bringing you a fresh and healthy, fast, casual experience. Seafood, chicken, pork, or tofu, the bowl options at Fresh Fin are endless. Check them out at the corners of Brookfield, Bayshore Mall, East Side, and Third Ward, or online at FreshFin.com. This summer, 5.40 a.m., WAUK has a new lineup. Yes, that's awesome. Starting at 6 a.m., Up North News, 8 to 10, The Earl Ingram Show. Mondays, 8 to 9, Under the Helmet with the Great Digger. Gilbert Brown and Earl Ingram, 10 to 12, as goes Wisconsin. And at noon, Civic Media Network News. At 12.15, Town Call. 1 to 3, The Todd Alba Show. 3 to 4, Matt Flynn Direct. 4 to 6, The Devil's Advocates with Dom and Crude. At 6 to 7, The Maggie Dawn Show. On 5.40 a.m. WAUK. We've all felt left out. And for people who move to this country, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Here's your updated forecast on the Shaw. High temperatures reach up to 87 this afternoon under mainly cloudy skies with a chance for isolated storms. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Chance for scattered thunderstorms again tonight. Lows around 64. Partly cloudy skies. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times again tomorrow. Slight chance for scattered rain showers. <laughs> Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. I am Kristen Bry. She is Jane Madnair, and this is Public Service Announcement, our weekly segment with Dr. Kristen Lyerly, uh, where we talk about health and health headlines and women's health. And I typically squeeze in a question about pregnancy and what I can and cannot do and what is is and is not normal. Uh, but I saw this, and this is less of a breaking headline, but it just felt topical because as the weather is warming up and we live in a very outdoorsy state, it felt like a good time to talk about Lyme disease and ticks and how we can protect ourselves and how we can prevent uh, getting Lyme disease. But I guess at the start, it's something that I feel like I've always known. Like I know Lyme disease is a thing. It does, how does it actually, so it happens from a tick biting you and then it turns into an autoimmune disorder? The tick is a vector. And when okay. it bites you, you get this bacteria and the bacteria causes the problem. And for most people who get Lyme disease, it's not an issue. You do a simple course of antibiotics, typically doxycycline, and you're good. 90% of people 
are done. It can take weeks or even months to resolve completely, but most people have no residual effect. Some people, however, end up with long-term complications. And the most famous example is Avril Lavigne. I don't know if you followed her at all, but her famous thing is she spent two years in bed and it ended up being related. Yeah. Two years. Like she disappeared for a while. She's back now. She is back. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really know any of her music right now, but I just know that she's pops up every once in a while. Uh Um, But that was because, and so it was because of Lyme disease. It was because of Lyme disease. And it's strange. It can be really hard to know because you may not know that you these ticks are small and you may not think that you are susceptible. Maybe you have a dog that was out in the wild and got a tick and climbed into yeah. your bed and the ticks in your bed and then the tick bites you and it, you just, you know, it bites you in a place where you don't recognize it and suddenly you have Lyme disease. And is it something that you basically don't really feel? I mean, like what is because when you give it one of the other uh, topics that I put on here, I don't think we're going to get to it today is. Uh, malaria and mosquito <laughs> bites, but I feel like uh, with mosquito bites, you hear mosquitoes as soon as they're on you. You usually can sometimes slap them, and even if they bite you, like you killed it because it's like and you immediately itches, and you know, mm-hmm. is a tick bite noticeable? Maybe. Okay. De- I mean, it depends. Where is it? What's that? what else is going on when you get bit? Is it in your waistband where you're more likely to be feeling some rubbing? you know, hard to say. Okay. And so when it comes to preventing this, um, what are some of the things that doctors want people to know? I'm so glad you asked. (laughs) So there are actually quite a few ways to prevent it. This is peak season. So it's really important to know that if you go outside, you could be susceptible. So wear proper clothing, cover yourself. This doesn't sound cool, but like tuck your pants into your socks. Um, I know, I know. Oh God, so I hot. Know. So oh hot. my gosh. <laughs> I mean, first of all, are you, people are supposed to be wearing, is this, and again, cause what is realistic versus what is advised mm-hmm. as far as like, is this when you're hiking well, or is this just in general when you like, go outside? If you're in your backyard and it's nice and manicured, you know, you can go barefoot and wear your sandals or whatever. It's all about risks and benefits. If you're hiking and there's lots of brush and you're in an area that just seems like there's lots of, you know, insects and things around, in that scenario, you're going to want to take more precautions. So wearing the proper clothing, making sure that you are covered. Also, importantly, using a repellent, a repellent with DEET in it, and you don't need more than 30% DEET. So the 100% DEET, that's overkill. That doesn't give you any more protection, and it's much more toxic than a 30% DEET. Also safe in pregnancy, Kristen. Oh, good to know. That's mm-hmm. something that I feel like I would have thought is is similar to like Roundup, where you should not be putting that on your body because <laughs> DEET always just sounds very strong. It is strong, but what's the alternative? Getting bit by a tick and developing Lyme disease. Yeah, so I guess if, I guess you're right. If you use it wisely, you know, apply it with care and wash your hands before you eat or before you put your fingers in your mouth. That's always good practice. Yeah. So I, you can do it carefully. Um, other things you can do to prevent getting bit by a tick, check your pets. Make sure that your pets have the appropriate antibiotic and anti-tick medications that your vet can advise you on that. And then one of the most fun things to do is a tick check. Is it fun? Isn't it? Or you strip down and you look at all those places, your waistband, you know, your ankles where your socks were, all those hairy places on your body. If your partner come over and look at your back, like a tick check can actually be, you know, it it is very important. It could be. Intimate? Sure. Uh, What does a tick bite look like? So what are you looking for when you do a tick check? You're just looking for a tick. And deer ticks are really, really small. The bigger ticks, the wood ticks are not likely to be the culprit with Lyme disease. They can still cause disease and cause problems, but the deer ticks are the real problems. Um, And if you find a tick, I was always taught like, don't pull it out, burn it with a match. Don't do that. Pull it out. Who cares if the head is still stuck inside? No big deal. The head's going to go away. Just pull it out. Just get it out. Get it out. Don't, don't, you don't need to light a match like a bad bathroom smell. <laughs> Just get right? the dick out of it immediately. What I was taught. Like in Girl Scouts, you know, light a match and then like try to, it never comes out that way. Just grab a tweezers and just pull it out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it just, and so it will just look like a bug, like under your skin kind of? It usually it's just, it's head is just there and it's small. Okay. 
Yes, it can burrow under your skin, but typically its body is kind of sticking out. Jane is literally giving the heebie-jeebie <laughs> signal. <laughs> And, you know, afterwards, if the tick has fallen off, often what you'll see is this bullseye rash. It looks like a little target symbol, but you can have other kinds of rashes too. So if you suspect, if you are feeling flu-like, headache, something's not right, and it's been this time of year, you've been out in the woods, you've been exposed, if you have any sort of an unusual rash, even if it's not a bullseye rash, it's worth getting evaluated because it could be Lyme disease. If you have it diagnosed early, if you treat it early, you're unlikely to experience that ugly sequela that can follow. So just be vigilant about it and be smart with your health. All right. Be smart with your health. That is uh, that is a good mantra. Dr. Lyerly, as always, so fun to have you here on Thursdays for a public cervix announcement. If you have any questions you want us to answer for next week, shoot us an email at asgoeswisconsin at civicmedia.us. Appreciate you as always, friend. Right back at you, sister. All right. We're taking another break. When we come back, sports update with our sports reporter, Mike Clemens. This is As Goes Wisconsin. <laughs> This summer, 5.40 a.m., WAUK has a new lineup. 4 to 6, The Devil's Advocates with Dom and Cruz. 6 to 7, The Maggie Dawn Show on 5.40 a.m., WAUK. CBS News special report. In a 6 to 3 ruling, the U.S. Supreme Court scraps affirmative action in college admissions. CBS's Major Garrett says justices overturned policies at Harvard and the University of North Carolina. The value of diversity, the court has argued, isn't enough to justify the harms done to other students equally or possibly better qualified applying to those institutions. Evan Kamenker, the former dean of the University of Michigan's law school, believes the case will have an impact far beyond college campuses and the issue has deep roots. Justice O'Connor, when she last defended affirmative action, made clear that race conscious admissions wasn't just about diversifying universities, but led to diversifying the leadership of our country, diversifying Who's in government? And in a unanimous ruling, the high court sided with a former postal worker who claimed religious discrimination by the Postal Service. He refused to work on Sundays. CBS News Special Report. I'm Steve Kathan. News is brought to you by Jingris Thompson and Walks, a statewide team of personal injury lawyers getting you the justice you deserve. Call 855-954-1186 for a free consultation. For Civic Media News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. Here's what you need to know in southeast Wisconsin. Shifting winds are bringing some smoke relief to Waukesha, Milwaukee, and the entire area. With the airflow switching around to more of a westerly direction in the mid and upper levels, that may help to shun some of the uh, direct feed of the smoke. That's meteorologist Paul Collar with the National Weather Service. Wildfires are still burning in Canada, but shifting winds and the chance of rain is cutting down on the air quality impact. A 72-year-old on a scooter was killed in a Waukesha crash yesterday. Police say at around 9 a.m., the incident happened near Salesville Road and Highway 59. At this point, investigators aren't sure whether the driver, who was wearing a helmet, lost control or was trying to avoid another vehicle. The Waukesha Police Major Crash Task Force is currently investigating. For Civic Media News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. When it comes to achieving successful jury verdicts and settlements, one law firm stands out above the rest. Jingris Thompson and Walks, a $6.2 million settlement for a woman permanently paralyzed as a result of medical malpractice. $4.9 million to members of a family injured due to the negligence of a truck driver and his employer. Call Jingris Thompson and Walks today, 855-954-1186. All in Jingris, Jingris Thompson and Walks, GTWLawyers.com. Get ready to dominate the field like never before. Get to Soccer World in Brookfield. They have a great selection of shoes, apparel, and accessories to help kick your game into high gear. Soccer World's team of soccer experts have over 38 years of experience in the retail and soccer market. From cleats to shin guards, jerseys to coaching equipment, they'll help you stay ahead of the game. Plus, look to Soccer World for all your team business needs. Soccer World, 12615 West North Avenue in Brookfield or online at SoccerWorldOfBrookfield.net. Tired of hearing only one side of the story? You want news and information from people who, like you, know what it's like to work hard every day and still 
struggle to make ends meet? Then tune in to The Rick Smith Show every weeknight from 8 to 10 p.m. right here on the Civic Media Radio Network. Be part of the conversation. Tune in, turn on, and take back the American dream. The Rick Smith Show, where working people come to talk. Did you know your favorite shows and hosts are active on social media too? Find Civic Media on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook and be part of the conversation happening there. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. I am Kristen Bry. She is Jane Madnair, and we are very excited to welcome back Civic Media's own sports reporter, Mike Clemens, on the phone. How you doing, Mike? Oh, there he is. Go ahead, Mike. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you, sir. Yeah, doing good. It looks like the smoke has lifted up a little bit around the state. I think so. That's, well, that's good. good. Gosh, what time do you get up, my friend? I got an email from you. At, you said that 4 o'clock this morning. They're on the east. The, I'm covering the Brewers right now, and they're on the east coast, and so I'm not on that trip. But sometimes you have to wait until you can get, to, you know, guys that are, are covering it for you, get to you know, interviews with players and things like that. And we do morning sports cast, uh, midday, afternoons on the civic media stations across the state. So, you know, you kind of take a little nap, get up, do a little work like that, and then and then go back. So uh, it's but hey, listen, <laughs> they're sending me to baseball, football, and basketball games. How how tough can it be? <laughs> that is true. That is true. When you get to do what you love, you won't work a day. Is that how that goes, or something, something like that? Like that. Um, so speaking Pretty of that, much. how are the Brewers doing? It's just interesting because we're in a part of the year. Um, or I don't well I don't cover teams about salary caps or really player salaries that much, but what's important is who's on your roster, uh, and and therefore if you have a winning a winning team, and so do you remember the, uh, the people really upset with the Brewers when they traded their closer Josh Hader last I, year when they were in first place? I do remember that because people were very upset. They thought, yeah, and they thought you know we're in first place. But, you know, they, the Brewers thought maybe they were a little too the smartest guy in the room. And they thought, you know, he started to trail off a little bit. And if we trade him now, we can get more for it. Well, no one can remember who they traded him for. And the, the clubhouse just collapsed and they, they lost. And they ended up having to make changes. They changed out the guy who had been the general manager the last five years, David Stearns, and his assistant got the job, Matt Arnold. So what's interesting this week is the Brewers are in New York and they're playing the Mets. And about three years ago, the Mets got bought out by a new owner named mm-hmm. Steve Cohn, who's one of these hedge hedge fund guys. You know, Very wealthy, guys, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's he's spending three hundred and fifty million dollars this year alone on the roster, whereas the Brewers are the twentieth most uh, expensive team in the league. There's about one hundred eighteen million, so the Brewers are battling for first in in their division. The Mets are 17 games out of it right now. Wow. And they've got the most expensive. Most, yeah. Money can't so buy everything. This, right. Didn't we learn that with Moneyball, you know, Mike? <laughs> well, here's the other thing, too, Kristen. I had not covered that much Brewers in the last few years. I mean, I, I mean, the first Brewers I was covering, I just got hired by a TV station in Milwaukee. It was the flagship for the Brewers. I got to go to all those World Series games. Wow. So I've been doing this a long time. But if you, you know, through COVID and those kinds of things, if you hadn't been around um, the Brewers much, and Craig Council, who's a really sharp manager for the Brewers, a couple of years go by and you start to notice all these things that he's using about on-base percentage and, you know, hard contact with ball, soft contact. And you start really saying, that's all those money ball terms. That's all that metrics and analytics Mm -hmm. that these guys now use as managers to get the edge in the game. So I think with what Council's got for a roster, he's doing miracles to win the percentages. So he just beat the Mets again last night. I mean, the Mets, their owner came out and had a press conference yesterday and frustrated because the New York fans are screaming, like, you know, what is going on? You spend all this money and all these teams, you jacked up the prices and everything. 
and we're 17 games out of it right now. So it's very interesting to see. There's a lot of those things that the Packers have said over the years about, you know, when a player gets to be 29 or 30, we're not going to give him another four-year contract and pay him $50 million. We're going to go with the 25, 26-year-old guy who's hungry, trying to get his next contract, and he'll probably be a better player, and the Mets are proving that point right now. So speaking of the Packers and our younger new quarterback, have you uh, been up to Green Bay and seen or have any updates on how Jordan Love is doing or kind of, I know we are a little ways off from training camp or anything, but is there any Packer updates in the summer so far? Yeah, uh, I'll tell you this. Um, In the summer of 2007, uh, people wondered if Favre was going to come back one more year, and he did. And he had a great season. They went 13-3, and three, but they played in the cold, and he threw that interception that yep. was intended for Donald Driver, and the Giants went on to upset the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And then Brett held out the next year, and they went back and forth in the whole drama, and he went to the Jets, and then he went to the Vikings and all that. But I told people then, I watched that training camp, and I just said, I don't know anything about these guys. I'm just going to look at number four and number 12 and number 12 was the better athlete, the better quarterback. And so even though Aaron Rodgers waited another year and Favre had a great season that year and worked his tail off, even his mom talked about, you know, even when they win, he's still looking at that laptop every night as to what he could do better in those games. He really put everything into that last season in green Bay. They went 13 and three Rodgers was clearly the better quarterback. I will tell you, I went through the same thing last summer. Hmm. Rogers is still the better thrower. Okay. He, he just is. And so love is, is just not as accurate or has the different touch of the football that Aaron Rodgers had back then, or even now at 39 years old. But Jordan is a, is a 24 year old athlete. He's quicker. He's faster. And here's the other thing, Kristen, it is, it has changed the dynamics in that locker room. Not that Aaron Rodgers is a, you know, a, such a prima donna or anything. It's just the fact is he's a huge star. He's the 800-pound yeah. gorilla. And with him, him out of the room, it's all equal now. The locker room is in tilted. They're all playing for each other. Everyone's on equal footing. That's got to help when you're trying to, you know, find a new identity for your team, you know, moving forward. I think that's a positive thing for what the Packers needed. Cause you know what, if Aaron Rodgers comes back one more year in green Bay and they have another season, like they did last year, it's stale. It's, it's just stale. Mm-hmm. And I think Aaron recognized that too, which is why at the end of the day, he thought, you know, maybe I need something different. Let's take this act to New York. We're talking to Mike Clemens, who is the civic media sports reporter, just getting a, a summer sports update. And actually, Mike, what you just said, I, I, I feel like I read that. I forgot who, where, if it was Journal Sentinel or where I saw a headline and kind of skimmed it as far as exactly that point of there's a lot of young guys. There's a lot of young running, you know, running backs and the wide receivers and stuff. And there's an intimidation factor that Aaron Rodgers brought of like needing to impress him, needing to not screw up and feel like you were going to be on his S list. Yeah, don't take off the king. Right? And and now that there is, like you said, everybody's equal, everyone's young together, that there is less of a domineering force as far as expectations of your performance and more of we're in we're all in this together. And so I don't know how other people work, but like that feels more supportive. <laughs> But I can tell you this for sure, Kristen and Jane. Uh, Matt LaFleur is not excited about what happened in this offseason. Oh, really? He wanted Rodgers back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He wanted Rodgers back one more year. Because, you know, when they, when, they, when they write your obituary, when they write about your legacy in the NFL, who wants to go down as the, court, as the coach who couldn't get Aaron Rodgers a second Super Bowl ring? Right? Mm-hmm. Or if you're the president of the team, Mark Murphy. And I, I, that was my take all through last year. And I really think the team sort of proved me out what it got to be this past off season and everything that I have been told that has been said publicly and that I've, I've observed is that they really wanted Rogers back one more year and they would figure out a way to appease love to say, no, you know what? You're going to watch a fourth year. But um, I, I think somewhere in there, Rogers just decided 
you know something? I already know what they're going to say to me. They're going to take away four or five of my friends, four or five of these veterans like Randall Cobb and Mercedes Lewis and some of these others. Although I really think LaFleur wanted Mercedes Lewis at 39 or 40 years old at, at the tight end to still come back one more year. But LaFleur has been has watched those veterans leave the team and replaced by 13 draft picks. It's, you know, he's 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 gone from uh, eighth or ninth graders to all kindergartners. Really. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. And and his coaching staff as well. So they're facing all of those challenges uh, with a very young team. It's like the 90 man roster. About 30 of them um, are, are rookies. So he's got a really young team that he's got to try and get ready for the upcoming season. And do you think there's anything, I mean, to be fair, like if you said, if that's your analysis that he wanted him for another team, but I also, I'd also heard things as far as the conflict of how Matt LaFleur wants to run an offense to how Aaron Rodgers wanted to run an offense. Is there any truth to that? Interesting. You brought that up because Mark Murphy uh, did an interview about a month ago. And I could tell you, uh, Mark uh, is the boss. And so even though the, even though the team's PR department will say to him, hey, here's what the way we want to talk about this right now. Here's, here's your talking points. That doesn't stop the Packers president and CEO since 2008 from just going across the street, putting on a headset and talking to some guy that's covering the girls state basketball tournament saying, yeah, you know, we're okay with Aaron moving on. He's kind of injured and, you know, he's, he's had his time here and we're really behind Jordan. <laughs> that was not what he was supposed to say. That was not what he was supposed to say. So about a month ago, Mark was uh, doing an interview on a radio station in the state where uh, he talked about, uh, he was asked, so how do you think this is going to look this year? And he says, you know, I think we're going to get back to the offense that we kind of hired Matt LaFleur for, which is going to look like what the Rams were doing in 2018. You see these triple fakes and jet sweeps. And it's basically, it's an offense that takes the pressure off the quarterback and you run a lot of fakes and you run the ball more and you throw more to the tight end, shorter, more accurate passes. And you don't need to have a hall of fame, accurate passer in it. And that's worked for the 49ers and for the Rams. And that's the guy that they thought that they were hiring when they hired Matt LaFleur, but it got away from that because they were running the Aaron Rodgers offense. So I asked LaFleur this about a week later, the next time we had a press conference, and you could see him kind of grinding his teeth. (laughs) And he said, we don't have a Matt LaFleur offense. We run our offense. And we base it on if we got Jordan Love, if we got Aaron Jones, we base it on who we got on the team, and then we draw plays accordingly. So he's almost kind of contradicting what his boss was saying on what they're going to put on the field this fall. That is good. very interesting. Good insider scoop. Good there, insider Clemens. scoop. All right. So the last question I have is if you have any thoughts or insights, because I saw this is just, you know, I don't know, some girl power, but with the new Bucks coaching staff, Sydney Dobner is promoted to become the first female assistant coach for the Milwaukee Bucks, which is a first in franchise history, awesome. which is very cool. Do you know anything Pretty about exciting. Sydney? Yeah, well, she started with the team actually five years ago. So oh, wow. she's been there and learning the ropes. And, you know, isn't that the smart way to do this? I mean, you know, bring this woman with this kind of potential in and be a part of the culture so the players get used to that, the other men that are part of the coaching staff. And now, I mean, you know, the other thing is they just hired their first African-American head coach of the team, too, a team that's been yeah. around since 1968. So that's that's a little bit more standard. But, you know, that is the next step that they've done. And so as they bring on Adrian and they're bringing back Terry Stotts, who actually was a head coach for the Bucks for a few years when Herb Cole was the owner. And then he had a successful run with the Portland Trail Blazers and Joe Prunty, who's a guy who was an assistant coach with Jason Kidd and an interim coach when they moved on from Jason Kidd. But for, you know, for her to get that position, that really rounds out this new coaching staff. Here's the deal, though. Uh, they just passed a new CBA uh, in, in in the NBA, and uh, Chris Middleton, you know, Giannis's right hand man, is up for free agency. A couple of other players, mm-hmm. and then Giannis has got to make a decision in September. So there's a lot of drama that's going to be we're going to be following in the Bucks in the next couple of weeks. Absolutely, and you will be here to keep us with the inside scoops. Mike Clemens is the Civic Media sports reporter. Thanks for joining us today, man, and uh, so happy you're on the team. 
Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Gene. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. We got one more break. We'll be back in just a minute. The summer heat can really get to you. Hot, sticky, you feel like you're melting. But Wauwatosa, coming in July, it'll be easy to cool off. Enjoy Ice Cream Social. This family-run, family-friendly business is more than just ice cream. It's a cool community hangout spot for friends and family. Let's talk about the ice cream. 16 delicious rotating flavors direct from the chocolate shop in Madison. The perfect way to stay sweet and cool this summer. Opening in July. Joy Ice Cream Social. Scoop, snack, shop. 8334 West North Avenue. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, this is Matt from Design Garden. Remember when the internet was new? Back then, you had to leave your house to start a business. Companies used to pay programmers bags of cash to get online. Now, small businesses can get online with a Facebook business page or Squarespace or Google My Business or WordPress. But which tools should you use? Can you afford to go down the wrong path? Design Garden uses modern tools to build your website the right way. Find us online at design.garden. Again, that's design.garden. As goes Wisconsin with Kristen Bry and Jane Matinair. Before I send boxes over, I have to take all of my things out. These boxes were interspersed with all sorts of things. But who doesn't stuff their pants and their shoes into a box full of work documents to I sort know. out later? Every time I leave a job, that's what I end up doing with my box of work papers. Bras go in there and just, you know, and I'll sort it out later. As goes Wisconsin. Weekdays 10 till noon on your local civic media radio station and on the Civic Media app. Here's your updated forecast on the Shaw. Chance for isolated storms this afternoon. Otherwise, mainly cloudy skies expected. Highs around 87. Winds out of the south, 5 to 10 miles an hour. Chance for scattered thunderstorms tonight. Lows dip down to about 64. Partly cloudy skies. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Tomorrow, slight chance for scattered showers. High temperature. I'm Kristen Bry. She is Jane Madnair. And do we get fact checks? We have a uh, fact check on uh, Mr. Clemens. Mike is wrong about the Bucks not having a black head coach until now. Milwaukee native Terry Porter coached them from 2005 to uh, 2003 to 05. It did not go well, but uh, good checking in. Otherwise, especially that info on uh, the Packers offense from the 608. So I didn't even know that. I didn't even set him up for that. That was just something that I had heard in. Uh, uh, that is interesting. It is interesting. It's interesting to think about being Mike Murphy and being loose lipped when you just go to like your kid's soccer game or something I, like that. And let me tell you some <laughs> insider information that no one else just knows. complaining despite your PR team being uh, like, please don't talk about it this, this, or this, and talk about it like this. And then you do it with like reporters and then realizing, oh, I have to do that with everybody. Oh, right. <laughs> That's something I would do. I am not the most tight lipped person in the world as far as, uh, you know, and I think to a certain extent, there is that as a double edged sword as far as being very you know, authentic and honest when I'm on the show and sharing my life and stuff like that. But as far as always knowing the um, the threshold of maybe too much information, TMI a lot. is not always, uh, you know, it's like, why is it a problem if I just tell the truth? It's like, well, sometimes not everyone wants it to be framed that way exactly exactly <laughs> um well i thought this was funny so you know ken jong yes the actor who is uh i think his biggest claim like original claim to fame was when he was in the hangover you know 12 13 years ago oh, the hangover okay. was like 2009 
and he jumped out of the trunk naked oh. but he is uh, it, it was great about Kim, uh, ken jong is he was a doctor like he was an md doctor before yes. he decided to go pursue acting and then also has had like an incredible comedic acting career uh but he has uh he is now he has a new job which is great you know because sometimes advertising is lame and then sometimes advertising is like that seems like a fun job so he's going to be cottonelle's first ever Asphertizer. Oh, I see the play there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he is, uh, he's helping Connell assemble a team of Marvel's The Avengers, but with butts. <laughs> <laughs> what? so basically uh he is partnering with the brand to become cottonelle's first as i said advertiser and his new title was announced uh yesterday by kimberly clark the wisconsin company uh, so basically the mission of this advertiser is to spread awareness about down there care by getting people to talk about their personal situations and feel confident to find solutions. This feels like the adult version of everybody poops. Um, <laughs> so as part of the campaign, this is reporting from uh, the Apple Post president and Becky Jacobs, by the way. Uh, so as part of the campaign, which Connell is calling advertising, <laughs> they're really doubling down. Yeah. People, well, I guess you may as well really own it. If yeah. Do it. People can compete for $10,000 to join Zhang as brand ambassadors later this summer. Yes, you too can be an advertiser for ten thousand dollars. And and how do you qualify for this? What I mean, ah, uh, I'd have to find the link as far as where the more information. But um, the he's on the mass singer because I'm scanning, scanning, scanning. Um. I don't, I have to have to read more because the rest of the article is an interview with him. And so uh, we will link that to today's show notes if you're interested in Look, becoming a brand that. investor. Yes. yes. Yeah. New opportunities. And so, uh, so yeah, so I thought that that caught my eye in this morning's daily briefing from oh. the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. This, again, sounds like another case of too much information. Well, I think I also, speaking of, uh, you know, jobs, that sound desirable. The a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the cheese and pizza eater at UW Madison, yeah, uh, they are that is now closed. I think they had like three hundred people apply, and so it's a pretty competitive gig. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see who ends up getting it. But uh, so then, what else is going on today? I guess as we wrap up today's show, any other breaking news that happened while we were on the air? Well. There's always little things. Um, there is something that just came across. So this anti-LGBTQ uh, same-sex wedding case that's before the Supreme Court. Oh, did that come out today too? But no, but what I'm, what I'm seeing is that that case is based on a falsity. What? That this person never went to this web designer and asked her to make them a wedding site for their same-sex marriage. And that's just coming out now? This just showed up on the on the timeline. Again, the veracity of this I am not I am not sure about. But this may be something that we'll have to follow up on tomorrow. That feels like that feels like as late to the game as uh finding out that George Santos is a habitual liar oh, after he was already elected to Congress. It's like how did no one fact check this beforehand before we got here yeah but the the man who is named again as this person who wanted this website made said no one has ever called him this is the first he's ever heard about it so this could be interesting that could be interesting yeah. um i'll have to look into that more after the show uh well depending on how that goes but also as uh we'll have a little bit more to talk about with the ruling that did come out and any of the other rulings and anything that comes out I'm on our drive to work tomorrow. Right. But we're going to be joined by Howard Schweber, who is a uh, professor of political science at the at University of Wisconsin Madison, and is kind of a legal, you know, expert on how the the ramifications of some of these Supreme Court rulings. And so he will be here tomorrow at eleven. And we will also be uh, joined by James Malouf from WFHR, who's going to be our civic media crossover guest for tomorrow. So we'll go through 
the best, worst, and the weirdest headlines of, in his opinion, from this week and play a little headline quiz. And uh, then we're going to bring back Am I the Sphincter? We haven't done that in a couple weeks. Oh, yay. So if you have a, if you have a, if you want to submit an, an Am, I, Am I the Sphincter, we can read yours at, uh, you can either text it to us at 844-967-2789, or you can always email us at as goes Wisconsin at civicmedia.us. As always, if you missed any part of today's show, you can go listen to it as a podcast. Do, do, do. And uh, you can find that at asgoesWisconsin.com slash listen or wherever you find podcasts on Apple and Spotify and all of the things. And uh, your daily reminder to go download the uh, Civic Media app. Also, tomorrow we're going to have Brewers tickets. And tomorrow we will have Brewers tickets for Monday's game. Thank you for reminding me that. Um, so, yeah. So, come back tomorrow. 10 a.m. We'll do it again. We'll round out the the week. And that's about it. Thank you for texting. Thank you for calling. Thank you for being part of the show. We'll be back tomorrow. This has been As Goes Wisconsin. Oh, man, I